Most people building an MVP app have had their app idea for at least a year, but they still don't have a working product. Today, we're going to talk about the one goal you should have with your MVP, plus how to validate your idea with your target market, and how to get your first test users. Way too many people overlook these critical app development strategies, but today, you're going to learn how to quickly and easily get from idea to tested product without having it take months or years of your time. I'm Kristen Youngs, co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help CEOs and founders build custom software to start or scale their businesses. Let's dive right in. We talked a lot about MVP strategy over in our Facebook group, and there's a question that comes up a lot in multiple shapes or forms. It goes something like this. I know I should launch a basic MVP in the beginning, but if I launch something basic, won't my users just leave because the app isn't good enough or big enough? It's a good question because there are a lot of misconceptions around what an MVP actually is. First, let's talk about why you should be building a slimmed down MVP in the first place and what that means. So an MVP is defined as a minimum viable product. It's something you should use to test your software idea and validate your path forward. Here are a few examples. The MVP version of Airbnb was a landing page that connected people with extra rooms or beds to people who needed a place to stay. In the beginning, they didn't accept payment, there was no map feature, there were no reviews, there wasn't really anything besides a landing page. The MVP for Twitch, which is a live streaming service for people who play video games, where other people come onto the platform to watch them play, and some of those gamers make a full-time living off the platform, by the way. The MVP was a live 24-7 video feed of some guy named Justin just living his day-to-day -day life. Seriously, people came on to watch this guy just live and now look at the platform. And the MVP for YouTube? Well, YouTube was a dating website in its initial days, and that should say enough about all the changes they've gone through since their MVP phase. See, MVPs are a basic starting point to test your idea. To add to that, your MVP is not something you need to be launching publicly. I want to repeat that. You do not need to launch the first version of your app publicly. You can launch internally within your business or with a small group of test users in the industry your app is for. Look, the goal of an MVP isn't to get rich. It's to get feedback. And not only that, but to get feedback as quickly as possible. Because if the feedback isn't positive, and it often isn't, that means you can adapt or pivot before you put too much time and money into building it. Now, the problem people have with launching a product like this is that they don't feel comfortable launching something that doesn't look good or maybe doesn't function in the way they want. They don't want to launch to launch a bad product because they feel like that'll just hurt them in the long run. But you need to remember two things. The first is, again, you do not need to launch your MVP publicly. Here's the thing. Every successful company goes through tons and tons of launches. I want you to think about some of your favorite big software companies right now. Do you remember the day Stripe launched? Do you remember the day Facebook launched? Do you remember the day Airbnb launched? I'm asking literally, do you actually remember their launches? Of course you don't. And that's because those companies went through tons and tons of launches, both inter internally and externally. And these are companies over a decade old we're talking about. The problem is you're comparing your initial MVP to those companies' products. You're thinking that if you launch something small and basic, there's no way you'll be able to make a name for yourself. Every company has a starting point though. And those starting points are barely a blip on the radar when you take their full scope into play. You cannot grow a successful company like those brands did unless you start small though. And that can mean doing many launches internally and with test users first. The second thing to remember is by launching to test users first, you can launch something publicly that you know people actually want to use. A lot of people go off their gut when building their apps. They think every feature they've come up with is a must have and that their idea is completely revolutionary. They think there's no need to start small because they just know their users will want all these features. And if they don't get to market quickly enough, someone else will offer those same features in a different software solution. That's a trap too many people fall into though. They keep building and building because they, they want their app to be perfect and they only want to launch publicly. So they spend a year or more developing their apps and their scope just grow, keeps growing larger and larger and larger the whole time. More often than not though, people who approach development like that either never launch or they do launch, but only to find that no one wants to use their app. Some never launch because they can't get out of the cycle of thinking their app needs more and more and more in order to be a huge disruptor right from the start. They just never break out of that cycle and actually put their app out there. 
And I'll be honest, this has a lot to do with fear and a lack of confidence, but that's something for another video. Uh, many other people launched at Crickets because they built something their target market doesn't actually want, but they never realized that because they never tested within the market before they launched. And that brings us to two more questions, and we're gonna cover them both. The first is, how can you tell your target market wants your product? This is really much simpler than most people think. Here's the thing, most app founders come up with an idea and then start building an app right away. But that's the wrong way to think about it. You shouldn't be coming up with an app idea. You should be identifying a problem. If there's a problem within a market, you can build a solution. It's much easier to test and build a solution for a specific market you already know has a very specific problem than it is to come up with an idea that'll serve many people with many problems. Let's go back to the Airbnb example. Right now, Airbnb helps hosts rent out their homes and helps people find places to stay. They offer long-term stays with discount, uh, discounts, short-term stays, unusual stays, experiences led by locals while you're staying in an Airbnb. They're also now talking about building entire complexes just for Airbnb rentals. They offer a ton of solutions for a lot of different problems. If someone is traveling for work, maybe they need a place that's listed as having a desk and other work-friendly features. Maybe someone wants to rent mostly uh, monthly while shopping for homes in an area and a hotel is too expensive. Maybe while someone is vacationing in an Airbnb, they wanna book tours, but they like experiencing local parts of the city instead of going with big tour groups. Lots of different people, lots of different problems, lots of different solutions. But in the beginning, Airbnb solved one very specific problem. When people were traveling to San Francisco for an event one year, hotels were booked out and many of those people couldn't find a place to stay. So the founders of Airbnb thought maybe they could list their extra bed online and help someone find a place to stay while also making some extra cash for themselves. Thus, Airbnb was born by solving one very specific problem for one very specific type of person. So. How does this tie back into knowing into you knowing whether your market wants your solution? Well, if you've started by identifying one specific problem for one specific person, all you have to do is create something very basic that solves that one specific problem for that one specific person. It doesn't even have to solve it. It could just show them how you would solve it. Then you ask those specific people for feedback. Trust me, it's much easier to do this than to try to create a full scope app that solves tons of problems for tons of people. You'll never get actionable feedback that way. Start small and grow from there. And that leads us to our next question, which is how to find test users. How do you find people to give you feedback? Someone recently asked this in our Facebook group. They asked how you find test users. And this is actually a really telling question to me because if you don't know how to find test users, there's a good chance you're not going to successfully build and launch your app unless you take some big steps back first. Because listen, if you don't know how to find test users, it means you're not solving a specific problem for a specific type of person. If you were, you'd know exactly who to reach out to when you need someone to test your app. Going back to Airbnb, the founders decided to try renting out their spare bed because there was a conference and all the hotels were booked up. But let me ask you, how in the world would they have known all the hotels were booked up? They lived in San Francisco. So my guess is they weren't looking for a hotel themselves. The more likely answer is that they talked to someone who was experiencing the problem. Listen, if you have not talked to someone who has the specific problem you're trying to solve, you shouldn't even be thinking about test users yet. You should be rethinking your idea altogether. Your first step is to actually talk to people and validate the problem in the first place. The next step is to ask them to test your basic product. Remember, you're solving a specific problem for a specific person. And if you're taking it upon yourself to do that, my hope is that you've actually talked to that specific type of person. If you haven't, you need to. If you have, that's your starting point when onboarding test users. Simply ask the people you already know have the problem. It sounds a lot easier than people make it out to be, and that's because it is. All right, I hope that helped you learn some helpful new strategy for your app. With the steps we went over, you should be able to take your massive app idea and start pinpointing smaller, actionable steps you can be taking right now to help you launch successfully.
If you learned something new today, go ahead and click the subscribe button right below this video so you can stay updated on every new video released. And if you want to take this way further, head to coachingnocodeapps.com and sign up for our extended training series. It's completely free. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.